Hello and welcome to another PA Matches tutorial. This time we're going to take a look at Orbital. Despite Orbital's current state, there's still quite a bit that can be done with it in regards to invasions and killing enemy commanders. The key is to understand Orbital. I'm joined by Merritt, who is quite skilled with Orbital, as is evident in his recent win in the 2v2v2 of the Battle of the Beast tournaments. This is part one of a two-part tutorial. In this first part, we're going to be taking a look at the basics of Orbital. In the second part, we will be going over some of the more advanced techniques involved with Orbital. So, Merid, take it away. All right, guys. Uh, Merid Four here. I want to talk about Orbital today, as Brian said, because it's it's not complete, as he said, and but it's still useful, and you can use it even though it might be frustrating. If you find it frustrating, I, I highly suggest you work through it and just resolve your issues because you'll start finding that you'll start winning those big team games or FFAs a lot more if you understand how to orbital. All right, so starting out with the orbital game, um, the easiest place to start is when to build an orbital factory. A lot of different tactics with this, uh, a lot of different strategies people use. Uh, one of them that was seen in, as Brian said, the 2v2v2 at the end of the Beast tourney, was that every single player, except for my team with Brian, Brian and I, we didn't rush orbital, but everybody else did. Um, it's a good tactic to use because it forces most, uh, it, it will force good players to also say, okay, he's rushing orbital and I need to get there first. The reason behind this is that they can get an Avenger above your orbital factory almost as soon as it's out of the factory. And that will shut down any expansion that you try to do if you try to launch any transport units or orbital fabbers or some stuff like that. So you have to be careful, and if you see somebody going orbital, I do suggest basically dropping everything and going orbital yourself. At the same time, when you do go orbital, you pretty much always should build a, a deep space orbital radar first so you know if you're being camped by an adventure. Exactly. You can't you, you, and throughout this, this discussion about Orbital here, it's going to be emphasized that the number one thing that you can get out of Orbital is Intel. And if you don't have Intel from the Orbital layer or on the Orbital layer, you might as well just call GG and walk, it out, walk out because you're going to miss the little things that could win you the game. Um, so, or the big things, <laughs> like an anchor or an Avenger sitting on top of your base waiting for you to spit out Orbital units. Um, in that regard, if you do find yourself camped, and you do find yourself with somebody who got to orbital long before you did, and they're just sitting there waiting for you to pop stuff out, build a couple umbrellas, and the problem will go away in a few minutes. Uh, umbrellas are pretty cheap. They're a little more expensive. They did up the price a little bit, but they are in the latest patch, but they still are very good at taking out your standard run-of-the-mill orbital unit. All right, so delving into what units you can use at the start of the game, as soon as you get that orbital factory out, it is suggested you build one or two Avengers immediately. It doesn't matter if you got it out late, got it out early, uh, it doesn't really matter, just build one or two. Mostly because they're cheap and they're an easy defense against prowling other prowling Avengers. And one, is, and two is always better than one. So two or three, great, great, great way to start. Um, after that, it's up to you. Uh, you can use a an orbital fabber to go to another planet and build a teleporter, but you have to keep in mind that that will cost you 3,000 metal to build both one on the other planet and one on your planet. So combine that with the price of going T2, or compare that with the price of going T2 uh, for the whole package, and you're essentially spending the same metal you would to go T2 uh, getting to another planet. Even more, in fact, uh, if you think about it. So it's a choice you have to make. Uh, or you could just grab your commander with an Astraeus, or even an engineer with an Astraeus, and uh, take him to the planet. Mind you, that'll be a lot slower than using an orbital fabricator. Uh, and it has been known that people can rush you with an orbital fabric by waiting for you to uh, send your Astraeus over. And then they'll put an orbital fabric on the opposite side of the planet and take it over. While you're slowly getting up, or while you're slowly getting stuff up, stuff up with your commander, um, it is known that they're twice as fast as Astraeus's. Just want to point that out so everybody understands. Orbital fabbers are fast, much faster than Astraeus's. Astraeus's are actually the slowest orbital unit in the game, so be careful. <laughs> um, That's uh, I believe uh, Zephod likes to, and Marshall as well like to refer to the 
Orbital Vanguard drop, and that is the reason why a lot of people find that, uh, especially in the higher level um, player tiers, find that immensely hilarious is because the Astraeus is so gosh darn slow that it's it's so slow that if you didn't see it coming, then you deserve to have a Vanguard dropped on your head. Um, so anyway, moving on here. Once you get those Avengers out, once you decide what you're going to do, expand to another planet, don't expand to another planet, you need to start building up your presence there. The easiest way to do this is to just build an anchor straight up. Anchors are amazing for defending an area. They'll shoot down probably 20 or 30 Avengers all massed together at the same location before dying. They're that good. Um, it, it is expected that that will change soon because a lot of people seem to dislike the fact that anchors are much more powerful than Avengers uh, in a straight up fight. But it, it goes both ways, I guess. Um, after that, I suggest getting some power up because 4,000 power from those radar, uh, or not those radar, solar panels, is a great addition to your economy because it's almost as much as a T2 factor, a T2 energy plant. Um, and it's a lot more inefficient, but it's worth getting a couple up because if you get nuked and you lose that energy, you'll have some reserves. And vice versa. If you get wiped off the orbital layer, you will have some reserves on the planet. So the best policy is to diversify and use both. Um, after that, I suggest getting up uh, either more combat units or some intel, like an advanced radar satellite or radar satellite, to just basically see everything. Uh, radar satellites are really cheap, but and they can be spammed, which is nice, but they are very, very poor at vision. And also, even worse, at radar. <laughs> the radar is actually less than that of a T1 radar, which is significantly awful. <laughs> um, now, for actually playing in a, in a single planet system, or maybe in the beginning of the game, the most important thing you want to use Orbital for is Intel. You don't really want to attack anybody yet with it, because it's too expensive to get to that point, and in all honesty, there's nobody to attack. There's nobody with Orbital significant, significant Orbital at this point. They're just, you know, everybody's still consolidating what they're doing, they're still fighting each other on the land, they're still fighting each other in the air. Somebody might be moving off planet. Um, but what you need to do at this point is get intel. Best way to do that is get a radar satellite and put it over their base. Or put it in between your bases because it has such a large vision radius that you'll see everything. Um, and if, if there's other worlds, build a radar set, an advanced radar satellite for each planet in the system and send it to each and send one to each planet. That way you have immediate intel where everybody is, and even if it gets shot down. By orbital defenses, you still have a snapshot of where everything is and who's on the planet. Um, uh, the intel game is probably the most important facet of orbital in this patch. So, being unable, if you don't understand that you need to build advanced radar satellites, you're going to lose the game because of something little like maybe a, a double or a triple or a quad nuke going up on you know a neighboring moon that you could easily have dealt with. If you knew that there was an or that, that you had, an, if you had an or advanced radar satellite, you could have known that and stopped it before it happened. And that, uh, let me tell you, that is the worst feeling ever to to look back at a game and say, I could have stopped that if I had known it was there, and then realize that hey, I had orbital, I could have done that. So um, that's a huge, huge, huge part of it. Now, once you get uh, for usefulness on a single planet game, for example, the 1v1 or 2v2 or maybe even a four pl a four way free for all of any type uh, on a single planet, orbital is all about intel. If you can control the orbital space, it's kind of like controlling air, where if you control the airspace, you see a lot more than your enemy does. Uh, in orbital, if you control the orbital, you don't just see more than the enemy does. You don't just deny them intel that orbital could give them. You literally can see everything. And that is a huge, huge advantage. So keep that in mind. Um, the only downside to this, uh, and it is a huge downside, is that focusing on developing your orbital game will significantly limit your abilities on the ground. Uh, the reason for this is simply because it takes so much metal. So you'll have to balance between what you want to do, especially on a single planet system, um, for do you want the intel and use your units as precision snipers, as it, as it were, to take out high value targets so that your enemy can't expand or is unable to develop end game strategies like nukes or hallies? Um, it's, it's, it's up to you. 
Um, but and I suggest practice in this regard if you want to figure out what the best balance is for yourself. It's not it's not an easy decision, and it's it's very it's a very much a decision that will decide the game for you. Um, other than that, uh, is there anything else you want to touch on, Brian, for the starter? That no, that's a it's a great overview. The as you just want to hammer on Intel. Intel is very important in planetary annihilation, and that's one of of uh, Orbital's most valuable assets. Thanks for watching part one of this tutorial on diving into Orbital. Stay tuned for part two. See you next time.